This is our fifth session now in Philippians 4, 4 to 7, and we move beyond explaining the meaning of not being anxious to this process that Paul is commending here as the alternative. Don't be anxious, but, let's read it, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'm going to keep on saying, rejoice. Because this always here is going to involve some really difficult times. So I'm going to need to keep saying, counterintuitively, keep on rejoicing. Let your gentleness, not your quarrelsomeness, your self-assertive, demanding, self-justifying demeanor, but your gentleness be known to all people. Let that be the reputation of your Christian life. The Lord is at hand. He's at the gates. He could break in at any moment that he please, and in doing so, he will vindicate you in this, and you don't need to be anxious that you need to fix everything because he's going to fix it when he comes. So don't be anxious about anything, and that is Anything corresponds, doesn't it, with always. So rejoice always. No, there are no circumstances where this is excluded. There may be weeping, to be sure, but we weep in joy and we rejoice in weeping. So always corresponds to not anxious about anything. Positive, rejoice always. Negative, don't be anxious about anything. And then today we focus on but in prayer, in everything. Here it is again. Not anxious for anything. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Three words. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So the focus today is, so what do we do not to be anxious? Father, show us what it is to be a people of prayer, in supplication, with thanksgiving, making our requests made known to you. Show us how to live this. Make us this kind of people, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the alternative, he says, to being anxious is to do this. Don't do this, don't be anxious, but do this. Replace anxiety with this way of life. Namely, in everything, everything that would tend to make you anxious, everything that would tend to make you not rejoice, anything, tend to make you anxious. In all of that, go vertical. Prayer. And my understanding, this way I'm going to try to put this together. you got these three pieces, right? You've got prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I think supplication with thanksgiving is the kind of specific prayer he has in mind. Prayer is the general word. You find that all over the New Testament. Supplication is one particular kind of prayer, and this is a way that you can couch this supplication. You could be demanding and ungrateful in your supplication, which would be a bad way to pray, or you could be thankful in your supplication. So I'm going to put a box around all of that as the way We let our requests be made known to God. So there's the fundamental command. Let your requests, that's the supplications here, be made known to God. So prayer is first, the big general statement. When you tend to be anxious, go vertical. Go Godward. Start talking to God. And remember, we pointed out a couple times ago that this be known, this passive verb here, 
Let your gentleness be known to all people. Let your your requests be be made known to God. So solve the problem of being gentle as your reputation to all people by solving the problem of getting all of your requests that you need in order to be gentle from God. Let God be the one who hears about your requests and your burdens and your troubles, and yet let the world see your peaceful, humble gentleness. So, when you tend to be anxious, go vertical first with God. In that praying, let there be two aspects to it. First, ask Him for things. These are requests. Ask him. He wants you to ask him. You're his child. He's the rich, beneficial, uh, beneficent father. But in your asking, do it with thankfulness. So the key here is let your requests, whatever you need to talk to God about to get rid of this anxiety, let these requests be made known. Make them known in a certain way. How? First, go to God, not to man. Man has his place in solving your problems. God is first and decisive. Go to God. Go to him with requests. And in those requests, not an arrogant, demanding way. What? Let's think for just a minute about this word, thanksgiving, and why it would be that Paul is especially jealous that our praying and our asking in particular with these requests be with thanksgiving. What, what, is, what is the tone? What's the mood? What's the heart reality behind thanksgiving? It's God is good, and I don't deserve. So, this would correspond to God is good, I am glad, and I don't deserve, I am lowly. That's the feel of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving has this double dimension. I'm not a demanding person. I'm just full of thankfulness because God is good. And that's the demeanor that he wants these supplications in these requests to go to God in. He wants us to have a lowly, humble demeanor, and he wants us to be confident that God is, is good and generous. That demeanor will bring down the blessing of God in such a way that we don't have to be anxious, we can be gentle, and we can rejoice. So, it's remarkable to me and very significant that he is saying, when you go to God, go to him in prayer with your request, but always have the mindset you're going to a good, generous Father that will make you thankful. And you're going in a humble lack of deserving. You're, you're coming as a child to a father, not a demanding employee that's earning wages. God is good and generous as a father. So let Thanksgiving color this. One, just one more observation about Thanksgiving. Here's Ephesians 5, 4. Let there be no filthiness or foolish talk or crude joking, which are out of place. And then, stunningly, Paul says, but instead, let there be thanksgiving. There's just something about a heart of thanksgiving that says God is so good. And I don't deserve what he gives me that rules out filthiness, foolish talk, crude joking. Isn't that amazing? I mean, how many people think that if you're going to solve a person's mouth problem, 
This guy's mouth is full of filthiness. His mouth is full of foolishness. His mouth is full of crude joking. And so here's the remedy. Gratitude. (laughs) Thankfulness. And so it's not surprising to me then that Paul would add thanksgiving as the heart disposition of this supplication that fits it to be free from anxiety, full of joy, gentle and kind, all of that no doubt producing a kind of purity of heart that doesn't fill itself with crudities or vanity or emptiness or complaining or quarrelsomeness. That's what Paul is after. He wants there to be, and this is what we turn to next time, a peace of God, and that'll be our last session, the peace of God that flows from this. And what does it mean that it surpasses all understanding? That's where we go next time.